Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nicolas Dréan. I'm talking to you from Nice. I'm really happy to present you with my friend Tanguy Mraovic, the new intramedullary staple dedicated to the arthrodesis of the GIP joint of the long fingers and the IP joint of the thumb. This intramedullary staple is called Kerifuse and has been developed by Kerry Medical. We do perform GIP fusion to treat primary osteoarthritis most of the time. Sometimes we have to treat post-traumatic osteoarthritis like this mallet fracture and tendinous disease like this old stiff and treated mallet finger, for example. GIP osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis of the hand and is most commonly found in women over the age of 60. It causes joint pain, deformities, and instability. The joint can be swollen and deformed with mucoid cysts and nail dystrophy. DIP or disease is a reliable and durable solution, which <laughs> guarantees painless, stable, and aesthetic yeah. joints. Loss of mobility induced is not really a problem if MCP and PIP remain mobile. To ensure a good consolidation between two bones, some criteria are necessary. First of all, the device must present good stability and provide bone compression. But the implant must also be as small as possible to allow large bone contact surface, which is necessary for a good fusion. Different arthrodesis techniques have been proposed over the years, like Kishner wires, tension band wiring, screws, plates, and intramedullary staples. These solutions, apart from the staples, have all some disadvantages. They propose only straight arthrodesis. They are responsible of fingertip injuries. They can twist over the time. Sometimes the material has to be removed and they don't leave enough space for an eventual PIP implant. Intramedullary staples have several advantages. The availability of the implant in different angulations gives a choice to fix the arthrodesis in different positions. The position is determined with the patient prior to surgery depending on the finger involved and the demand placed on it. The fingertip and its sensitive branches are not damaged during the procedure. Implants are space saving. They provide good compression, stability, and no removal is required. And this is even more true when we are talking about the thumb IP. I was talking about the thumb because the importance of a 25 degree angulation is, is uh, with particularity of the thumb and the absence of scar in the pulp. But the previously proposed intramedullary staples had no sufficient compression and stability. Different studies have shown complications such as broken implants, perforation of the cortical bone, and bending displacement of the stubble. That's why Kerry Medical decided to develop a new DIP arthrodesis device. The implant was designed to address the problems and complications of the precedent intramedullary staples. The distal part of the staple is double shaped for an optimal cortical contact with the distal phalanx. There is a chanfrein for an easy insertion. The teeth are shaped for an idle cortical anchorage and two notches are dedicated for the clip holder. The hinge here in green has been minimized for a better spongious contact. You can see a hole for a key wire. This is made for avoiding the device migration during its insertion and the mechanical resistance has been increased for a strong and stable arthrodesis. The proximal part 
it is 3D shaped with an upfitted central leg for a perfect matching with the medial phalanx anatomy. You recognize the notches for the for the cortical anchorage. Carifuse exists in four sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. The S and M sizes are more often used for the long fingers, and the L and XL sizes are adapted for the thumb. Three angles are proposed, 0, 15, and 25 degrees. The 25 degree angle staple is mostly used in the thumb IP arthrodesis. If we remember the key points for an ideal bone fusion, which are maximum spongious bone contact, maintaining of a good compression and avoiding any micro movement, we understand the principle of the carry fuse. It is made of nitinol super elastic, a metal with shape memory. Its insertion is made implant folded. The legs will open in the phalanx, providing an optimal cortical contact. Similarities exist between carry fuse and next fuse, but carry fuse offers several advantages. The W distal shape is more anatomic for vertical, a better cortical anchorage. There is a central anti migration hole. The 3D design of the proximal part with a third central leg guarantees implant stability, and the larger surface improves bone contact and avoid cortical perforation risk. Here, the X-rays comparing the staples in thumb IP fusion indications. Of course, the device went through all the certifications tests, insertion tests, static flexion tests, fatigue tests, and obtained the RIM compatibility and the BO compatibility. Here is how the packaging looks like and the plastic holders to protect the leg and make it easy to hold. Templates are available if one wants to plan which staple will be inserted before the procedure, which is very helpful, as you will see with Tangi. The instrumentation set is simple, like every time with Kerry Medical. Here are the forceps for every sizes, the manual reamer, which make the preparation of the bone very easy, the conical drill, the key wire, and the rasp, one rasp for proximal and one for distal in the S and M sizes, and one proximal and one distal for L and XL sizes. Here, picture of the manual reamer, the conical drill, the rasp, the forceps, and the key wire. And now it's time for me to leave the floor to Dr. Tangi Mraovic, who will show you the surgical procedure in detail. Thank you very much. So I will explain step-by-step step the surgical procedure for performing an arthrodesis of this distal interphalangeal joint with a carefuse intramedullary staple. In this procedure, it is an arthrodesis of an index and third finger. As Nicolas Dreyan explained to you before, the procedure is similar for the interphalangeal joint of the thumb but with a larger staple size. On the X-rays, you can see severe osteoarthritis of the DIP joint of medius finger and index finger with ulnar deviation of the index finger that we will correct. The templates allows you to choose the optimal size of the implant, which will be confirmed by the size of the rasp during the procedure. The chosen angle depends on the operated finger, but also on the aesthetic request of the patient. The patient is lying on his back, the upper limb to be operated on place of the arm table under local regional anesthesia. The surgeon is seated at his convenience with the head of the legs of the patient. His operating head is front. The C-arm prioscopy is usually not useful. Surgical instruments are prepared. 
I like to mark the incision and the alignment of the finger on the skin. Several surgical approaches are possible. Transversal, T-shaped, H-shaped, double wide shape. Here, I prefer the more aesthetic transversal incision. This incision is cutaneous and tendinous directly to the joint. The collateral ligaments are cut, allowing hyperflexion or subgun dislocation of the DIP joint. With the bone nibble, we remove the osteophytes from the base of P3 and head of P2. Bone fragments are preserved if a bone graft is needed at the end of the procedure. Then, with the square pin, we mark the center of the head of P2 and the base of P3. With the reamer, we remove the cartilage from the head of P2. Depending on the angle chosen, 0 degrees, 15 degrees, or 25 degrees, the reamer is more or less tilted. Bone fragments are preserved. The same step is performed of the base of P3, being perpendicular to the axis of the phalanx. Then the head of P2 and the base of P3 are drilled to insert the wasp. On P2, you can start with a small distal wasp. using the armor directly to the holder. The rust must be fully inserted. We finish with the proximal rust. If the proximal rust is easily inserted, the medium size of the staple is confirmed. If the proximal wasp cannot be fully inserted, prefer small size. On P3, the small distal wasp is used with the hammer or not. The wasp will also be fully inserted. We can see the rectangular mold of the two wasps here, larger on P2 and smaller on P3. Once the size and angulation have been validated, the staple can be implanted. With the older forceps, the proximal legs of staple are tight. We start to push the staple into P2 by hand. The third central leg is positioned dorsal. Then, to prevent staple migration, the pin is inserted into the small central hole. You can then impact the staple by hitting the holder and finished with a dedicated impactor.
so the central pin always in place to avoid any migration. The P3 phalanx is position of the staple. The staple order is removed. Then the joint is impacted. The central pin always is placed to avoid any migration. If the joint is too tight and too difficult to reduce, you can complete Palmar release. So we check the good contact between the two phalanges. If necessary, a bone graft can be done inside the joint. The skin is sutured. To avoid the edema, I like to put on sterile strips. Once the arthrodesis is finished, we check whether the deformation is correctly corrected. In this case, the chosen angle allows good contact between the pulp of the thumb and the index finger. The first dressing is large with a big protective splint for the first night. The next day, a small bandage is made with a proper splint protecting only the operated DIP joint for four to six weeks. PIP and MCP joints being free. On the X-rays, the intramedullary staple is in correct position with good contact between P2 and P3. The ulnar deviation of the index is corrected. The patient will be seen approximately one month post-operatively. If consolidation allows, the splints are removed. In these other cases, you can see the clinical and radiological result at the third month follow-up. The thin finger is well centered with thin when consolidated arthrodesis. <laughs> 